Hello, and welcome to Delta Weekly. I'm Darius in Hong Kong, bringing you a roundup of highlights from Delta News. Let's take a look at stories that made the headlines this week. The Standard Chartered Hong Kong Marathon 2024 was successfully held on Sunday. Hong Kong's famed actor Zhou Yunfa took part in the half marathon for the second time. Zhou finished the 10 kilometers in 1 hour, 3 minutes, and 57 seconds. His participation attracted crowds of citizens eager for photos with the star. The government has announced special boundary crossing arrangements during the Chinese New Year holidays. Services at the Shenzhen Bay Control Point will operate overnight to provide round-the-clock services from February 9th to 13th. Services at the local control point will be extended on February 9th and 11th to 2 a.m. the following day, with the operating hours of the East Rail Line to be extended correspondingly. On January 23rd, the temperatures in Hong Kong hovered around 6 degrees Celsius, and the mercury dipped below zero at the highest peak. Ice formed on Tai Shan, which reached a low of minus 2.4 degrees Celsius. According to the observatory, an intense winter monsoon and the wide band of clouds and rain sweeping across the region affected Hong Kong's weather. The 17th Asian Financial Forum was held in Hong Kong on Wednesday and Thursday. The forum assembles more than 3,000 financial heavyweights from over 14 countries or regions to shed light on heated topics. Chief Executive John Lee addressed the opening session where Minister of the National Financial Regulatory Administration Li Yunzhe delivered special remarks. Financial Secretary Paul Chan welcomed participants at the keynote luncheon and the cocktail reception in the evening. The HKMA and the People's Bank of China on Wednesday announced six measures to deepen financial cooperation between the mainland and Hong Kong, including First, expanding the list of eligible collateral for the HKMA's RMB liquidity facility. Second, further opening up the onshore repurchase agreement market. Third, releasing the amendments to the implementation arrangements for the cross-boundary wealth management connect pilot scheme in the GBA. Fourth, introducing facilitative measures on remittance for property purchase by Hong Kong residents in the Bay Area. Five, deepening the collaboration on cross-boundary credit referencing, and six, expanding the cross-boundary pilots of eChina Yuan. The measures will strengthen Hong Kong's status as an international financial center and offshore RMB business hub and further facilitate the connection of capital, data, and financial markets in the Bay Area, he added. CE John Lee told lawmakers during a questions and answers session on Thursday that there will be an all-out effort to explain the need for the local legislation of Article 23 of the Basic Law, saying it will put an end to issues that have troubled the cities for years. The draft is expected to be unveiled soon. Lee also emphasized the government's unwavering commitment to fulfilling this duty and highlighted the societal consensus over the need to effectively address national security concerns after the 2019 unrest. The national security trial of former media tycoon Jimmy Lai moved on this week. Ex-senior executive of Apple Daily, Zhang Kim Hong, continued his testimony as an accomplished witness. John told the court on Tuesday that he hoped to call for sanctions from the United States through a letter campaign to then-American leader Donald Trump ahead of the national security laws enactment in 2020. On Wednesday, John said Lai inflamed anti-China sentiments in the U.S. and instigating hostile acts by feeding overseas readers extreme and negative articles. On Thursday, John said that Lai vowed to press on with calls from U.S. sections after the national security law was introduced in Hong Kong, instructing his non-deformed Apple Daily tabloid to focus its English-language coverage on mainland China to influence the international discourse. The municipal solid waste charging delayed until August before full implementation with designated garbage bags on sale today. The Environmental Protection Department earlier announced a list of more than 3,000 authorized retailers of designated bags and designated labels covering supermarkets, convenience stores, pharmacies, 
and physical stores on online platforms. Among them, Circle K, Foodpanda's online supermarket Pandamart, and Press Ride will offer one bag for dual use starting today. Alright, that's all we have for this week's program. I'm Darius in Hong Kong. Until next time, bye bye.